Shabbat Shalom, Shabbat Shalom, Wes Smith with Witnesses of Yahuwah, House of Restoration, Remnant House coming to you, just sharing on this Shabbat day, and as you see in the title, we're talking about the anointing, I mean, and that anointing is so precious, it's so precious, and we have to understand what the anointing is, because the anointing destroys yokes, the anointing teaches the anointing is what helps us through our day to day. I mean, but this is the thing about the anointing. A lot of people have to recognize because something that, that I didn't realize until I truly, truly got into this walk is what the anointing was. I didn't truly understand what it was, what it what it meant to be anointed. All right. Because this is this is something that that to be anointed is to be ordained from 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 the time to be predestined to do something that Yah has already predestined you for, whether it's a uh, baking, you know, some some people can cook to a degree where it just man it it, it fills the the soul with joy. Uh, some people can preach, some people can teach, some people can heal, some people can prophesy. So it's different things that the anointing does and people like. But this is the part that a lot of people don't recognize about the anointing. The anointing is something that when in order for you to walk in the anointing, in order for you to walk in this anointing, you have to go through some things. You have to uh, be beaten a little. You have to be pressed a little and shaken just a little bit and even grinded just a little bit. See that? See, when olive oil is made, right, it has to go through a process. And just like when Yah is ready to use us and willing to use us, and if we say that we're going to walk according to his will, right? The anointing is what, what proves that you are, are living for Yah. The anointing proves that you are walking for him. You are, are, are living your life for him. Why is that? Because the anointing allows you to heal people, right? James 5 and 14. James 5 and 14. Let's go there real quick. James 5 and 14. Because it's the anointing that does different things in our lives, right? But the anointing also heals people. And it's in scripture. It says, right? So if you look at James 5 and 14, if any sick among you, right? Look at that. Is any sick among you, let him call for the elders of the called out assembly and let them pray over him, anointing him with oil in the name of Yahushua. Now look at this. And the prayer of belief shall save the sick and our Adonai shall raise him up. And if he have committed sins, they shall be forgiven. That's the, the anointing. Because see, the those that are sick, those that need to be healed, because remember, sin is a sickness as well. So, so we all have a process because remember when Yahushua came, he said it's not the, the well that he comes for. Or the, he said it's the sick that's in need of a physician. And so therefore, we all are in need of help. But it's his anointing that heals us. It's his anointing that allows us to be able to lay hands on the sick. Right? It's his anointing. And then what, what does the anointing do? Through the anointing being used to us, we give glory back to Abba. Huh? We give glory to him because we know that it's not our power. It's his power that is doing it. Look what it just said in James 5 and 14. One, one more time. We're going to do James 5, chapter 5, 14 through 15. Look at this. Is any sick among you, let him call for the elders of the called out assembly and let them pray over him, anointing him with oil in the name of Yahusha. So, see, in the name of Yahusha, prove that the anointing may rest upon us, but it's not us that is that has the power. It's the Ruach HaKodesh given to us as a gift by Yahusha. But I want to tell you something. That gift comes out of Christ. And, and I ain't talking about... I ain't talking about a price where you paying with money. I'm talking about where you have to go through some things, where you have to suffer some things, where you have to be beaten a little bit. Huh? Listen, 
I hear my apostle say it all the time. Beat him. Put in the fire. Beat him. Put in the fire. What is that? That's how a sword is made. When the smith, the blacksmith takes the sword, he beats it, beats it, beats it, put it in the fire. Some of us got to go through a little fire and a little beating in order for that anointing to rest upon us, right? Look at this. It said, uh, pray in verse 14, is any sick among you, let him call for the elders of the called out assembly. And let them pray over him, anointing him with oil. You see that? Anointing him with oil. So, look at that. Let them call or, or call on the, the elders. And then they anoint him with oil in the name of Yahushua. And look what it said. In the prayer of belief, the prayer of faith, shall save the sick and our Adonai, our master shall raise him up. They shall raise him up and if he have committed sins, they shall be forgiven. You see that? You see that? So, the anointing isn't something that can just be brought. It's the gift of Yah. The gift of Yah that allows us to be able, to, and listen, the anointing gives us wisdom, the anointing gives us understanding, it gives us knowledge, and it also gives us direction on who to lay hands on. Remember, scripture says you don't just lay hands on anybody, but the anointing through the power of the Ruah that's that's the anointing. And it will it will guide, it will direct, it will lead you where you need to go and what you need to do. Even when we're in prayer, as it just said right here, it'll guide us. Remember when uh, uh, Elijah, Eliyahu, when, when, when he had that issue and he prayed that it rained out on the earth? That was, he, 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 was, he was blessed with the anointing. Even when, when he thought there were no other prophets and he went up against all the prophets of Baal. Huh? You remember that up on Mount Carmel? And those same 450 prophets were 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 uh beaten just by not by Eliyahu, but by the power of Yah through the anointing. But guess what? Even after that, after he had gone uh uh humiliated Ahab and, and his uh and his little uh uh, minion, prophets, whatever you want to call them. Guess what? <laughs> then a threat went out after that prophet. And he feared for his life, but he had just saw the power. So that's how, that's what I'm telling you, is not by your power. So don't get cocky and get all proud of because uh, you said a prayer and somebody was healed. It's not you. You give glory back to Yah because it's him. It's his power through the Ruach HaKodesh that is saving and healing people. Uh, yeah. Because this can, it ain't it can't be brought with money. I'm going to show you something. Acts. Acts. Acts chapter 8. Acts chapter 8 verse 18. Acts chapter 8, verse 18. Look at this. And when Simon saw that, now not Simon Peter, this is another Simon. If you go back and you read, you'll know that Philip was up and uh and I think it was uh where was he preaching at? Let me see here. He was up in Samaria preaching. So this other uh guy that was bewitching people named Simon, he Saw them preaching. Now look at here. This is the Simon that they're talking about. And then you'll know when Simon Peter come in because it'll call him keeper. So it said, uh, and when Simon saw that through laying on of, uh, of the apostles' hands, the Ruach HaKodesh or the Holy Spirit was given, he offered them money. He offered them money. Now watch what Apostle Peter said. Saying, give me also this power that on whomsoever I lay hands, he may receive the Ruach HaKodesh. See, he was trying to, he, he thought he could pay for something that is given through going through something. 
You see what I'm saying? We we all have to go through something. We all have to suffer a little. We all have to be beaten a little. We all have to be grinded a little. We all have to be pressed just a little bit. In order for that, because when that oil is, is pressed out, then it begins to run and it begins to turn to that golden look of the olive oil. Now, the olive oil is not is a part of the anointing oil, right? And guess what? We want that. We want that that blessing of the anointing to be upon us, but we don't. We can't pay for it. So, so no matter how many, how many, uh, what they call seeds. Now you pay your tithes and your offering, but no matter how many seeds, I'm not. If I, if I, if I make anointing oil, I'm not charging you for that. I, I, I will. I, if you contact me, I'll send you anointing oil. I'm not I'm not charging anybody for anything that comes from Yah. Why? Because that's not my place. Y'all didn't tell me to charge anybody anything. Because this gospel, no, I, I won't charge for that. You know why? Because the minute that you begin to become changed by the gospel, oh, you're gonna pay a lot of things because once your eyes come open to the truth, now. You have all these different types of tribulations that's going to come. And, I, and I'm going to show you in a minute what I mean by these different types of tribulations. Because when you walk for y'all, when you live for y'all, the world is always going to, the world, not the word, the world is always going to be against you. And there's always going to be things coming to, uh, uh, up against you. But as long as you walk in your anointing that Yah has blessed upon you, as long as you walk in that anointing and you begin to, you continue to trust in him and believe by the Ruach HaKodesh through faith. He will move on your behalf. Now remember this, Yahusha, he, he, remember we talked about this, he was without God. He had no sin, but he still was beaten for you, right? For your iniquities. He was bruised for you, right? He had to go through something to be able to walk in that anointing. Look at this. Look what else it say. So Kepha answered in verse 20. We go on to verse 20. But Kepha said unto him, your money perish with you because you, because you have thought that the gift of Yah may be purchased with money. You see that? Listen to this now. You have not a part nor a lot in this matter for your heart is not right in the sight of Yahuwah. See, your heart, see, in order for the anointing to be in your life, you have to have a pure heart. You, you, can't, you can't be thinking that you're going to have hidden agendas and different things for your personal use. No. Remember, we do all this for the will of Abba. Not my will, but your will be done. Remember how many times that Yahusha asked him, could you remove this cup from me? He prayed fervently about that thing. But the Father's will was already in motion. It was already set. He knew that it had to be done. Right? And a lot of times, what goes on in your life, as you go through those struggles, those trials, those, those uh, testimonies, Right, because that's what that's what's come out of the testimonies. You you oh man, I can't hear myself, but I can hear somebody else. That's the type, that's the type of thing. Listen, sometimes you gonna end up, as I talked about my uncle last week, in prison, and you can't get out, but you freeing others. Huh? A anointing comes at a cost. A anointing that comes at a cost. And and a lot of times we. We hear this when we first join. Well, we hear this from a lot of people join into the church that you, they don't think that you're supposed to go through that. People think that it's just supposed to be all hunky dory. But I don't care where you read that in scripture. Each and every one of these testimonies was testimonies because they went through something, not because they just sat back at the side and then said a word and everything was good. Nah, nah. They went through something in order to give that testimony. And a lot of times in order for, for that anointing to be able to flow in your life, in order for that anointing to destroy yokes, 
How how you how will you know it's gonna destroy a yoke if you ain't went through nothing? Do you know what a yoke is? A yoke is what they put around the ox when he's treading the 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 field. Now the yoke is used is is, is called a yoke because it's burdensome. It's heavy. It 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 weighs you down. And not only that, have you ever seen where they put prisoners and, and the head is in this part and that's in that? That's a yoke as well. And don't you think that's get kind of heavy walking around with your hands and it keep your arms up like this long enough? Oh, them shoulders and everything get so that that's burdens. But he said the anointing destroys the yokes. Right? Let's look walk real quick at verse 21, then we'll move to where the anointing destroys it. You have neither part nor lot in this matter, for your heart is not right in the sight of Yahuwah. So remember that. Your heart has to be right. Now, something I want to show you. We were just talking about how the anointing destroys yokes, right? So at a time when, when Isaiah was prophesying, that he was prophesying about uh, the, the nation of Asher coming upon the nation of Yashar'el if they didn't get that stuff together, right? And he said, it'll be a time where where you're you're, you're going to be in yokes. But he said that it is the anointing, right? Verse, chapter 10, verse 27, let's look. And it shall come to pass in that day that his burden shall be taken away from off your shoulder. That's where the yoke goes, right? That his burden shall be taken away from off your shoulder and his yoke from off your neck. And the, notes, the yoke shall be destroyed because of the anointing. The yoke shall be destroyed because of the anointing. But that yoke got put on them because you were going through something. That yoke might have been put, might have been put on them because you were in disobedience. Right? But now listen, David was still anointed even though he sinned. Right? It said, all I have sinned and come short of the glory of Yah. Except Yah Hushan Shiat. So, don't think just because uh, you sin don't mean that the anointing can't be on your life. The anointing will be on your life. But the anointing isn't, once again, your power is the gift of Yah given to you that you may be able to uh, raise the dead, heal the sick, feed the poor. See, it changes your heart. It changes the way that you live. The anointing is that that spirit emits the spirit of truth given to you. Right? The spirit. Watch. Let's look somewhere else real quick. It's the spirit that Yah will, will that Yahusha said that he would send back to us to teach us. Right? So go to go to uh Saint John. St. John chapter 14, verses 26 through 27. St. John chapter 14, verses 26 through 27. Right? So look at this. St. John. Now, as we, we look what he's talking about, this is what Yahushua is talking about. He going away, but the comforter will come back. So, now we see what he's talking about, the Ruach HaKodesh, all right? But the Ruach HaKodesh is that anointing that will dwell through you. Watch. <clears throat> Excuse me. But the Comforter, which is the Ruach HaKodesh, whom the Father will send in my name, he shall teach you all things and bring things to your remember, remembrance whatsoever I have said unto you. Look at verse 27. Peace I leave with you, my peace I give unto you. Not as the world gives, give I unto you. Right? And then go on to verse, oh, sorry, still in verse 27. Let not your heart be troubled, neither let it be afraid. See, remember, and Timothy, he said that he gave us a spirit of what? Spirit of love, of peace, of a sound mind, but we do not have what? The spirit of fear. Why? Because he sent us back. The Ruach HaKodesh. The Ruach HaKodesh will do what? It will teach you. Here go another scripture confirming it with the same apostle. Look. First John. Here we go. 
First John chapter 2, verse 27. Look what he say. He said, but the anointing which ye have received of him abides in you, and ye need not that any man teach you. But as the same anointing teaches you of all things, and is true, and is no lie, and even as it has taught you, you shall abide what? In him. You shall abide in him. But it ain't something that just uh come just because uh you know you you think that you can pay for it. It ain't something that come just because uh you think that oh because because I'm saved and I go to church then I can do all these and, and a lot of people wonder why don't I see miracles? Well, I'm gonna tell you something. I see miracles. I see miracles. Those same miracles that they talk about in scripture, I have seen. Huh? That, that still happened? Yes, it does still happen. Why? Because it's the anointing. The anointing destroys the yoke. What's the yoke? Death. What's the yoke? Sin. What's the yoke? Hmm? Financial in, uh, 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 hurt and ruin. Uh, sickness. Cancer. But I, I have seen people heal. I have seen when, when, when the doctor says that you can't have a child. Because you have too many uh, 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 tumors. Five, five, I think she said they call it fibroid tumors. And then next thing you know, you pray fervently. Because you begin to change your life and the anointing begins to be on you. And then as the anointing begins to be on you, you begin to pray fervently. And as you pray fervently, Yah begins to confirm to you what you asked for. You can see a friend sick. They may not believe, but because of your belief. Because your belief in Yahushua HaMashiach, that changes their belief. Because when you went and prayed, right, by the Spirit that said, lay hands on them, anoint them with oil, lay hands on them, and pray for them. And next thing you know, they heal. They feel better. It said that when the woman touched the hem of his garment, he, she instantly began to feel better. Instantly. Why? It's because the anointing. What did he say? He told the disciple, I felt the virtue leave out of my body, meaning the power. The power of what? The anointing, the Ruach HaKodesh. And so when we begin to, 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 to uh, try to think that we're bigger than what we are, guess what? Yah will put us back in our place. That He said, let no man think himself bigger than what he is. In other words, let no man raise himself up. Because in other words, he will become a baby. But stay a base that that who that Yah may raise you up. That Yah may raise you up. And so when we come and we deal with the anointing, we got to understand something that you're gonna have to go through something to be able to walk in that anointing. What you talking about? You gotta go through something. Let me show you something. Let me show you something real quick. Cause in Genesis, let's go back to the beginning. Let's go back to the beginning. Genesis chapter two. Uh, 39, this man was accused of sleeping with his master's wife because she wanted him accused. Now, we know that this young man was anointed because he, he used to have dreams. He could interpret dreams. He could even, he, he was just wise and skillful. He, he, he knew he, he was led by the spirit and lived by the spirit. And so when we walk in that anointing, that's what it is. It's living by the spirit. The anointing changes your life. The anointing changes the way that you think. Remember, I pray, Yah, re re renew the spirit of my mind. Create within me a clean heart. Renew within me the right spirit. Why is that? Because I want that spirit in me. In me. I want, when I walk, people to, to, to notice something different about me that knew me years ago and see me again and like, man, you don't even seem like the same person. When, when people see you, they ask you because they know that you can get a prayer through. And when I say get a prayer through, I'm telling you, some people's prayers might not even leave the ceiling in the room that they sit in. Why is that? It's because they don't have an obedient walk with Yah. It's because they don't have a faithful walk with Yah. And it's because their hearts are stubborn. And stubbornness is equal to 
Huh? So when we see these things, when we know these things, we would do better. Right? But listen, this young man went through an ordeal and was locked away. And he was locked up for almost um, at least 20 years before he got sent from the prison to the palace. But think about that whole time people don't think that a person that's going through that is anointed. But he was anointed to go to prison. Hold on, hold on. He was anointed to go to prison? Yes. He was anointed to go to prison so that he could meet that baker and then tell the baker his dream and then the baker go back to the pharaoh. The pharaoh say, uh, he say to the pharaoh, you know what? I remember this guy in prison that said this to me. And then he get brought before pharaoh. He tell pharaoh what he needs to do in order to keep his crop and keep his land through the seven years of bad famine. That's anointed. That's anointed. Yah had already gave him the wisdom. He predestined him to go through that. And then when his family came, he said, he forgave them and said, listen, it was meant for me to go through that. He shrugged it off like, like it wasn't 20 years of his life gone. After his brothers cast him into a pit. After his brothers gave him to some, some uh, 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 Ishmaelite. Sold him into slavery. And, and listen, listen, the sad part about it is, they got something from it. But he got something from it too. <laughs> he got the anointing. See, they got paid while he got anointed. Yeah, all of them went on and they, they, they allowed a lot of change and, you know, different things happened through that tribe. We know that Yahushua came through the tribe of Judah because think about it. Judah, Judah was the savior in, in, in a sense. He was like, let's not kill him. <laughs> See, look at all that. Everything played a part. In, in, in this road. But look what Joseph had to go through. Genesis chapter 39, starting from verse 11. Genesis chapter 39, starting from verse 11. Okay? So look at this. He said, And it came to pass about this time that Joseph went into the house to do his business, and there was none of the men of the house there within. Now look at this. And she caught him by his garment, saying, lie with me. Now, she want him. It ain't the other way around because he still, he walked and he know what scripture teaches. He followed Torah, right? So he said, and, and he left his garment in her hand and fled and got him out. Now, remember what scripture says, submit yourself to Yah, resist the devil, and he will flee. Now, first you have to submit yourself to Yah. When you submit yourself to Yah, that's when you know that anointing is on you. Because if you submit yourself to Yah, then you can resist Satan, the devil, the adversary, the one that's coming to kill, steal, and destroy anything in your life if you're not walking in that anointing. Huh? <laughs> Sometimes, man, you have to realize that you're being beaten to be put in the fire. Beaten to be put in the fire. And sometimes you got to realize that you're going to be pressed, shaken, and beaten. And even a little grinded. But guess what? That makes you even stronger. I remember a mentor of mine said, man, if I'm going into the jungle to find the lion, I'm going to find the one that got the most scars on it because that tells me that he don't been through something. And a lot of times you want to find that person that been through something. You, you want to find the person that has a spirit. Right? Look at that. So look, at, look what else it said. And now I say that she called him to the men of the house. Oh, and it came to pass, verse 13, and it came to pass when she saw that he had left his garment in her hand and was fled forth, verse 14, that she called unto the men of the house and spoke unto them, saying, See, he has brought an Hebrew unto us to mock us. He came in unto me to lie with me, and I cried with a loud voice, verse 15. And it came to pass when he heard that I lifted my voice and cried and that he left his garment with me and fled and got him out. And she said, verse 16, she said, and she laid up his garment by her until the Lord came home. And she spoke unto him according to these words, saying, the Hebrew servant which ye have brought unto us came in unto me to mock me. And it came to pass, I lifted up my voice and cried, and he left his garment with me and fled out 
And it came to pass when his master heard, now listen to it, heard the words of the woman. <laughs> he heard the words of the woman, of his woman, which he spoke unto him, saying, After this matter did your servant do to me, that his wrath was kindled. Now he 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 in the, he in the mood now. He, he don't want to hear nothing that servant had to say. Why? Because he he's a servant. He he gonna believe her word over here. Not only that, she got the other false witnesses involved because she brought in the other servant to to agree with her. And then not only that, she used kind of used his uh race against him. Yet you brought this Hebrew in. Look at that. So look at look at here. It said verse twenty. And Yosef's master took him. Listen to this. Took him. And put him into the prison, a place where the king's prisoners were bound, and he was there in prison. The man, the man did time for what? Something that was not his fault. He 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 didn't do anything wrong. He was wrongfully accused, and a lot of times we're gonna be wrongfully accused, but then it's gonna be times. It's going to be times when others is going to try to get you to go against the word of Yah or go against what Yah's word, in other words, what Yah's word tells us, what his Torah tells us. But you know what? I know three brave men named Hananyahu, Mishael, and Azar Yahu. Who? Who you talking about? Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, you better learn that Hebrew name. You know, because we, we like to call them by the pagan name, but we forget their Hebrew name. Yes. Hanayahu, <laughs> Mishael, and Azayahu, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. See, they changed all their names to mock their holy name. Yeah. Do a study on them. Changed all their names to mock their holy name. And as if that wasn't bad enough, now they want me to bow to some some statue. They want me to bow and, and worship to some music that they playing. No, they, they, they wasn't hearing that. So guess what? They had to go through the fire. I just told you, sometimes you're going to be beaten because of the fire. But that makes you strong. And not only that, that shows your faith if you when you are, are going through it. The anointing allows you to adapt to the situation, right? Look at look at these boys. Let's let, look at these men. I'm sorry, not boys. They at the time probably was was a little older than when they first went into to Egypt, uh, Babylon. I'm sorry. Starting from verse 13 in chapter three, Daniel chapter three, starting from verse 13. Look what it said. Then Nebuchadnezzar. And his rage and fury commanded to bring Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. Then they brought these men before the king. Nebuchadnezzar spoke and said unto them, Is it true, O Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego? Do, do not ye serve my Elohim, nor worship the golden image which I have set up? Come on now. He just asked them that question. He, they didn't bow down. They didn't get down with everybody else. And sometimes you're going to have to go against the grain. Huh? Sometimes you got to be willing to stand for the word of Yah. And that's what the anointing will make you do. Huh? It will lead you into all understanding. And when you understand his word, you know that you will not go against his word. Look at this. It said, now if ye be ready that at that time when ye hear the sound of the cornet, the flute, the harp, the sackbut, the psaltery, and the dulcimer, and all kinds of music, ye shall fall down and worship. Listen to that. You shall fall down and worship the image which I have made well. But if ye worship not, ye shall be listening to this cast that same hour in the midst of a burning, fiery furnace. Now, I want to tell you, the anointing gives you boldness. It allows you to stand up for the word of Yah. Remember this. He said that when they come to 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 take you, he says, speak not a word. Why? Because it'll be the spirit that speaks for you. You don't have to say a word. Let the spirit do it. You do things when you walk according to the spirit. Said the just shall do what? Walk by faith. 
And if you're willing to walk by faith, then you're trusting the Ruach HaKodesh. If you're trusting the Ruach HaKodesh, then you're allowing that anointing that teaches you to guide you. Look at that. And they're being guided by the anointing. Look at this. He said, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego answered and said to the king, O Nebuchadnezzar, we are not careful to answer you in this matter. Meaning, I'm not just going to sit up there and tell you, yeah, because everybody else is doing it. <laughs> I ain't conforming to this world. Hmm? I'm not conforming to this world that you created around us. I'm, I'm, I'm following Torah. Look at what, look at this. So he said, if it be so, listen to this, our Eloi, whom we serve, who we worship, who we glorify, who we give honor and praise to our mean. Look at that. It said, who we serve is able to deliver us. He going to deliver us from that burning, fiery furnace. And he will deliver us out of your hand, O king. But look, look at this. Look at this. But if not, I want you to recognize this. But if not, be it known unto you, O king, that we will not serve your Elohim. Nor worship the golden image which you have set up. We won't do it. That's what we said. We ain't gonna do it. Huh? But see, some of us, some of us that claim to be true anointed followers of y'all would give up because we saw that person over there, folks. Huh? We'll give up because our wife decided to go the other way. Hey, I love my wife, but if she ain't willing to serve Elohim, Yahuwah, versus that thing that he created, oh, we got a problem. Why? Because I know that scripture tell me that every soul must work out their, every everyone must work out, work out their salvation with fear and what? Tremble. And, and, and I will be praying for her also while I'm walking through that fire of being burnt alive, one or the other. But just like they would not allow, they said, listen, even if he doesn't, we still ain't going to serve your God. And you have to have that mindset that even if he doesn't, I still ain't serving this image, okay? Look what it said now. Look what it say. So, in verse 20, and he commanded the most mighty men that were in his army to bind Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego and to cast them into the burning fiery furnace. Then these men were bound in their coats, listen to that, their hose and their hat and their garments and were cast into the midst of the burning fiery furnace. Now, I want y'all to see something that happened. Therefore, because the king's commandment was urgent and the furnace exceeding hot, remember, it was a burning fiery furnace. And it said that at least six times. Look what it said. The flame of the fire, listen to this now, it slew the men that took up Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, but guess what they did? <laughs> These three men, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, fell down bound in the midst of the fiery furnace. Bam. Anointed. They went through the fire. And sometimes you're going to have to go through that fire in order to walk in your anointing. You're going to have to. Because so many times we think that 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 we're just supposed to be uh, blessed. We think that we're supposed to be just uh, have the most fortunate of, of, of things happen to us. No. No, sometimes you, you got to get a little, a little pressed and beaten. I'm going to keep saying that. Sometimes you got that. Guess what? Go through that tribulation. But are you going to be like that 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 seed that was 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 received it with joy? You remember when he was doing the 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 parable the the parable of the of the seed? Are are you going to be the one that received it with joy but when tribulation huh and persecution come, then you fall away? You leave? You blame Yah for going through this? Huh? Yeah. You get counsel and then you blame Yah because you going through the counsel. Or are you going to glorify Yah 
for going through this, for allowing you to go through this, because you said, use me how you see fit. Oh, we forget about the things that we say to y'all and think that it's just supposed to be uh, uh, peaches and cream, flowers and candy. It ain't like that all the time. It ain't like that all the time. When you see these people entertaining on TV that's preaching and, and doing all that different type of stuff, stop listening to that mess. Because that's what they want you to think. They want you to think that y'all's word is for entertainment and it's not. Y'all's word ain't for entertainment. Y'all's word is for us to learn how to live, how to walk. It's called the way, the truth, and the life for a reason. It's because you're supposed to be living your life according to that way and walking according to the truth. But yet, people claim when they sit up there screaming and hooping and hollering and making all that noise and having that little pitches that they do <gasps> and all that different type of stuff. Listen. That ain't no anointing. That's a show, a spectacle, a facade, a hypocrite. <laughs> Remember we talked about that earlier? That's that, that leaven that's trying to destroy the whole law. Remove that mess. Remove that mess. Do like these boys did. They walked through the fire. And as they went through the fire, guess what? It purged them. It purged them. Y'all remember Daniel? And I, I ain't gonna read it. You know Daniel was in the lion's den. What did he go into the lion's den for though? Because he was willing to serve his y'all when he was told not to. He was willing to still serve his y'all. But the anointing is what led him into the fire. The then because he had to pray three times a day. Fervently. Why was he praying? He was praying for his nation. He was praying for that nation that he was stuck in. He was praying. And he and guess what his prayer did? His prayer allowed him to live to see Cyrus begin to set the decree to free his people. But he stayed behind. It's so awesome how, how and think about David. Young King David. Right? He was anointed before he was king. He was already anointed. Right? But Saul that was king had an evil spirit that was in him and it constantly was after David. And David had to pray. He had to seek y'all. He had to just go. He went through so much with Saul. Right? And yet he said what? Even though I will not touch y'all's anointed. You hear me? I will not touch y'all's anointed. Why is that? Because once y'all's anointing is on you, you let, uh, or on anybody, you let y'all deal with that person. It ain't for you to sit up there and talk about them. It ain't for you to sit up there and disrespect them. It ain't up there for you to disgrace them. But it's for you to allow y'all to deal with that person. Right? And then the Philistines came upon him and saw they didn't want the Philistines to kill him. So he stabbed the field through himself. And then a man come along talking about Saul. He killed Saul. And what David do? Oh, you don't put your hand on God's anointing. He killed him. See, he lied about touching God's anointing and got his own self destroyed. And a lot of times, we'll put ourselves in situations where we ain't got to have ourselves in. So you have to be careful. You have to pay attention. And you have to allow y'all's anointing, his word, to guide and direct you. And so basically when we go all the way down to it, his anointing is that word. His anointing is the Ruach of that. His anointing is Yahusha HaMashiach. Right? Well, let's look at another scripture that points toward the Messiah. All right? So, let's look here. Matthew, right? Oh, I'm sorry. Luke, Luke chapter 4, verse 18. Luke chapter 4, verse 18. The Ruach Adonai, Yahuwah, is upon me because he has anointed me to preach the Besora to the poor. Listen to that. He has anointed me. Who, who is this? This is Yahusha. This is Yahusha in their reading the prophet 
Yeshayahu or Isaiah. The Ruah Adonai Yahuwah is upon me because he has anointed me to preach the Basora to the poor. He has sent me to heal the brokenhearted, to preach deliverance to the captives, and recovering of sight to the blind, to set at liberty them that are bruised, to preach the acceptable year of Yahuwah. Look at that. To preach the acceptable year of Yahuwah. Now, this is something that I want everybody to take into account because some people are anointed to preach, some people are anointed to teach, some people are anointed to prophesy, some people are anointed to, to do uh you know all the different things on the computer, make drawing to to there's so many things to cook, to to um there's so many things that Yah has his people do and then when you bring them together, right? When you bring it together you you don't see nothing but the grace of Yah in it. Because of the, the life that I used to live, the life that person used to live, we were all sinners, but then now he threw his, brought us out of the darkness into his marvelous light. I mean, y'all, it's just so good. And yet, there are so many that take his word for granted. There are so many people that, that, that wants to use the anointing, or, or they can't use the anointing, but they want to uh, mock the Holy Spirit. For their own agendas and 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 claim to be uh, call prayer lines and do all that you know uh, run around the church throwing up and spitting up and all that different type of stuff and, and claim out the Holy Spirit and then leave out in the same way that they were before they came in. So I want to tell you now a scripture that that Yahusha Hamashiach uh, brought to me when I first gave my life. When Yahushua HaMashiach uh, called me back to him. So, look at this. And I want y'all to remember we said the anointing destroys yokes. Matthew chapter 11, verse 28. Yahushua said, come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn of me. Remember. Learn of him. It's the anointing that teaches, right? Learn of me, for I am meek and lowly in heart. Because remember now, we learned that if our heart ain't right, the anointing can't. We can't have that ruah. I that's that anointing to be used by y'all. So look what he said. I am meek and lowly in heart, and ye shall find rest to your souls. For my yoke is easy, and my burden is light. And I said all that. To say, if you haven't given your life to Yahushua Mashiach, give it to him today. It is of the most utter importance. We are living in a time like no other. And be honest with you, this is an exciting time to be here on earth to see the things in Scripture coming to pass. But in order to walk in that anointing, you're going to have to go through something. Joseph went through something. David went through something. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, or Hanayahu, Mishael, and Azariahu, even Daniel went through something, right? Each and every one of these prophets went through something. Isaiah had to walk around three years, but booking naked. Ezekiel had to lay on his side for, for I don't know how many days on both sides. That makes you sore. That makes you sore. John had to see things that were unpleasant and was on the, on, on the island at the time. The Apostle John on the island in exile. In exile, but still wrote a letter to us that we may be able to, to, to walk according to, to y'all's word. I want to show y'all something else because impartation, impartation is something else that we need to learn how to do it. Meaning when you when you recognize a brother or sister that's grown, impart knowledge to them. Help them help them to grow. Help continue to to you ain't the one molding and, and making them, but you can give them encouraging word to, to help them continue in this walk. That's what the anointing does. The anointing allows us to be able to lean on one another. The anointing is love. That Simple and plain. The anointing is love. And I want to show you something with this young man named Elisha. 
right? Hey, or Elisha, they call him. Look at this. Second Kings chapter nine. Uh, Second Kings chapter two. Second Kings chapter two. Second Kings chapter two. I want y'all to look at something. Second Kings chapter two, starting at verse nine. Look at it. And it came to pass when they were gone over that Eliam said unto Elisha. As what I shall do for you before I be taken away from you. And Elisha said, I pray you, let a double portion of your ruah. Listen, he talking about the, the spirit that of Yahuwah. It's not actually Elijah's spirit. It's the spirit of Yahuwah that rests upon Elijah. He said, let it be upon me. Now, y'all rec recognize that. Now, watch this. Let, let's look at it. And he said, you have asked a hard thing. Nevertheless, if ye see me when I am taken from you, it shall be so unto you. Now, if you go back and you read the beginning of this chapter, <laughs> if you go back and read the beginning of this chapter, Elijah tell Elisha, Elisha, Elijah. Okay, so Eliyahu to Elisha, right? He says that soon... Yahoo will be taking me away. He said, but I have to go into this place, stay here. And he's like, uh uh, I'm going wherever you may go until, you know, show us, show us Yahoo will live, I'm going where you go. So then he has another place to go. And he said, two of me were like, hey, stay here. He was like, nope. He was like, wherever you go, I go. So show us Yahoo will live. So then uh, one more time he said, hey, you go. So now right here, where, where he's telling them, he said, if you see me, right, when I am taken for you, it shall be so unto you. Now, listen to this. This man continued to follow and continued, and, and, and continued to learn from, see, he was being imparted. Elijah was imparting his mantle to this young man. And sometimes we are mentors, mentors to people. Sometimes we have to impart to our, our children. Sometimes it may be a brother or sister that's in this walk with us. Now, I ain't saying that you can give anything, but through Yahuwah, God and directing you, you can give a little guidance and direction to lead them where? To Yahuwah. Yahusha. That's why I offer them all the time. I say, if you haven't given your life to him, give it to Yahusha. It is of the most other important. Now look what happened with this young man. It said, and it came to pass as they still went on in verse, this is verse 11, and taught that behold, there appeared a chariot of fire and horses of fire and parted them both asunder. Now they were separated, in other words. And Eliyahu went up by a whirlwind into heaven. Now watch this. And Elisha saw it. Remember what he told him back in verse 10. He said, if you see me when I am taken, it shall be so unto you. But if not, it shall not be so. So basically, he was, he basically was saying, if you see me, this will happen. But if not, it won't. So look, look what happened. So he said, Elisha saw it in verse 12, and he cried, My father, my father, the chariot of Yasharel and the horsemen thereof. And he saw him no more, and he took hold of his own clothes and rent them in two pieces. Look at this. He took up also the mantle of Eliyahu, that prophet's mantle, that fell from him and went back and stood by the back of the Jordan. And he took the mantle of Eliyahu, because if you go back and read, like I said before, you'll see where Elisha went across the Jordan, but he went across on dry ground because he hit the, hit the waters with his uh, mantle, and the waters separated. Now look at this. And this is how you know that that was imparted to him. Look what it said. And he took the mantle of Eliyahu that fell from him and smote the waters and said, Where is Yahuwah Elohai of Yahuwah? Eliyahu. So he, he tested this to see if that anointing, he wanted a double portion. He didn't just want the the, the anointing that he wanted, a double portion of anointing. Now, Elijah said this is a hard thing. Now listen, in order to be able to have that double portion, you're going to have to go through some things. 
It ain't just gonna be a, 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 a something that just hand it. Here you go. Nah, you're gonna have to go through some things. Look what it look what it said. And and when oh I'm sorry. And when he also had smitten the waters, they parted hither and thither, and Elisha went over. You see that? Elisha went over. He went over the water on dry ground. So we're we going to sometimes go through things. And as we go through things, stop looking at it as, oh, oh it's got bad circumstances. No. Because remember, this is why he told us to give thanks and all things, for this is the will of Yah concerning you. The will of Yah and Yahushua Mashiach concerning you. Because as you go through this, this tribulation, this trial is helping you grow. And as you grow, it allows you to be able to give a uh, go through a test. And as you go through a test, you can give a testimony. And as you give a testimony, it changes and imparts stuff to other people. And as it imparts to other people, it begins to change in their life. And then it's like pollen, right? It imparts to that person and to that person and that person. And it begins to spread. And as it begins to spread, Yah's word begins to become manifest in you and in others around you, right? Because that's the whole, we're spreading the gospel, the good news. So I'm here to tell you, walking in the anointing is not nothing easy, and it can't be paid for, as we saw with the case of Simon, uh, the, the uh, sorcerer. Can't buy it. You're going to have to go through things. When it comes down to the anointing. And as you go through it. Recognize that. Just as Yahushua said that he was anointed to preach the gospel. In the acceptable year of Yahuwah. And, and uh, even you know. Preach to the captive. To set them free. He commissioned us to do. The exact same thing that he was ordained to do. And so therefore. We have a mission. And as we are all co mission to do this thing together. And I would just want to add that uh, if you're in the North Carolina area and you don't have anywhere to fellowship, even if you ain't in the North Carolina area, if you're anywhere in the southeastern region and you don't have anywhere to fellowship, reach out to us. We will fellowship with you. We'll even come gather together if, if need be because I'm, and my apostle is making it, making it known all over his channels. And I'm going to make it known on mine. We cannot do this alone. We cannot. We have to gather together. What, what does he say? He said, gather yourselves together. Let this be a what? Holy assembly. He called his people holy. We are to gather together in a holy assembly. And we need it now time more than ever to for us to begin together. So we're working on a project to get small groups and, 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 and small home groups together. It ain't got to be nothing big, but just getting together and create, praying together, uh, getting out into the neighborhoods and, and helping feed the, uh, the, the neighborhood children and even, you know, even presenting the word to the children if the parents, you know, nowadays you got to kind of get the parents permission. You don't want nobody, you know, trying to think that you're trying to get their kids. So this is this is things that that the, the original Ecclesia did. They weren't just gathered together just to have a, a, a meeting. They they ate together, they broke bread together. Let's read that real quick. Let's read that in Acts real quick together. Let's read that. As we we look at the Acts of the Apostles, right? Uh, let's look, okay? Acts chapter 2, verse. I'm sorry, my uh, verse. Acts chapter 2, starting with verse 42. And they continued steadfastly in the apostle doctrine and fellowship and in breaking of bread and in prayers. And fear came upon every soul, and many wonders and signs were done by the apostles. 
And all that believed were together and had all things in common. They were on the one mind and one accord. They did everything together and sold their possessions and goods and parted them to all men as every man had need. And they continuing daily with one accord in the temple and bringing bread, I mean, breaking bread from house to house, house to house. We got to get back to that. House to house. I ain't talking about gathering together and, 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 and no, uh, no building that we purchase as far as well, they call the institutional work. They call the church. I'm talking about house to house. You already, you know, just gather together. You come out. I tell you this, don't come with no mess because my wife don't play that. But we have to get back to what Yah has called his people to do. And as we break bread together, we begin to go out and we break bread with those that need to be fed. Natural and spiritual. Look what else it said. It said, and they continually daily with one accord in the temple and breaking bread from house to house, did eat their food with gladness and singleness of heart, praising Yahuwah and having favor with all people. And Yah added to the called out assembly daily, such as should be saved. I mean, so I'm here to tell you, we have to get back to. Doing what Yah has called us to do, and as this begins to happen, we're gonna see our out. Listen, I ain't talking about a revival what we used to do in churches where we go, yeah, and everybody all happy and screaming and hooting. I'm talking about a revival that happens in Georgia, a revival that happens in North Carolina. I'm talking about it all the way to California, from New York to California. To Arizona, to to Minnesota, to all these different cities throughout the United States, and these small group homes where we gather together, we have revival, and we praise and give glory to Yahuwah, Yahusha Mashiach, with a revival dash. I mean, and as this begins to happen, Yah, we see the movement of Yah before His Son come back. And the awakening, the awakening of the saints. So, just keep it in prayer with me. Give a praise offering right now. Hallelujah. Thank you, Yah. We glorify that name. We thank you. We love you. We love you. We love you. And I love you, family, as well. Um, if you haven't given your life, give your life to Yah. He loves you. He loves you. He loves you. He loves you. And just remember, if I'm never on. You can always go to my apostles page or our home remnant house, remnant house uh, Inc. And you can go and watch the videos that he dropped because he he has an anointed teaching, the anointed, right? And um, just like when he made me an elder, he imparted unto me. I mean, and so therefore. Uh, I'm not going to tell who it is, but I have two people coming soon that will be uh, moving to a higher court in y'all's uh, holy assembly. I mean, so we're just going to get ready for that coming up soon. And I just want to give praise on that to our uh, Mashiach. I mean, so don't forget to say thank you, Yahushua. I love you. Yahuwah loves you. Don't forget to say. Thank you, Yahusha. Talk to y'all soon.